all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's planning board meeting. Please be aware of the fire exit. It's to your left. If there happens to be an emergency, please move in a calm and orderly manner. And please take the stairs and do not take the elevator. The meeting is recorded by the secretary for the purpose of a record and minutes. So please identify yourself each and every time you come to the podium and speak into the microphone. The board will follow the items that are on the agenda. There should be extra agendas near the door in case you didn't get one. After your case has been called, the applicant and or the representative will come to the podium, identify themselves, give their address, and, their, and then present their case. The planning board members will then have a chance to question the applicant. If this case is a public hearing, it will be open for public input, at which time anyone wishing to speak to the board regarding this application will come to the podium, identify themselves along with their address, and direct any questions just to the board. Once all public input has been completed, the applicant and or site representative will be given a chance to respond to any public input. Once all public input has been completed and all questions have been satisfied, the case will be closed to public input and the board will then move on the decision. No further input will be allowed after that point. With that, can we please call the first case? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First item on the agenda is case number PB 1801 1. Upon the matter of request by Land Tax Surveying and Planning, acting as agent for Margaret Rood, for a steep slope environmental protection overlay EPOD permit to construct a foundation supporting an existing sunroom on premises 36 North Point Trail in an R1 residential district. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is John Sharaba. I'm with Land Tech representing the application this evening. I think that the uh, public notice does an excellent job describing this uh, application. Uh, we are here merely for an EPOD permit uh, to stabilize an existing structure. Uh, there was some confusion during the workshop of what we're actually doing, and I, I really want to clarify that the existing house is a walkout basement, and I've uh, provided an extra copy, a photo that I'd like to pass on to the board. They're all the same. Um, so really, as, as I explained back at the workshop, uh, there is an existing structure supported by six by six pressure treated posts. Those posts are now failing. And what we want to do is support that with a new basement wall made out of block and a normal foundation footer. So that's really what we're doing. We're not uh, expanding the, the footprint too much. We have a small five foot bump out for a sunroom in that area as shown on the plan. Uh, this plan was um, also reviewed by the Cons Conservation Board uh, back in January. I met with them, and uh, we have only two comments or three comments from the Conservation Board I'd like to note. Uh, the Conservation Board wanted us to note clearly on the plan where there would be any spoils uh, from the excavation uh, for the foundation, and those we show on a plan. And part of my green initiative is I didn't give you new plans tonight because there's only two notes that were added from the plan you received at the workshop. So we're, having, uh, we're showing a stockpile to be added right here on the west side of the house. And the only other note uh, that is shown on the plan is that we are not proposing any construction activity north of the existing retaining wall. So as that picture shows, this, this area slopes uh, from uh, south to north. There's a, there's a swale, drainage swale in the rear of this property. And we are not proposing to have any activity back there. So again, stabilizing uh, an existing structure. And uh, also i also like to point out that we're really only here because the structure is in with the mapped EPOD area. The slopes are not that severe. Uh, they're actually 14% that doesn't meet the requirement for an EPOD, but we are in there as, as the EPOD is mapped. Uh, so I know that's a brief um, review of the project, but I'll take any questions at this time. So Shrava, thank you for the detail as usual and also for attending the workshop. With that, is there any questions from anybody on the board? I don't, I just got one question for you, John. The, uh, the soil stockpile area, what's going to happen with that soil long term? 
Uh, we're hoping that it's minimal. If if uh, there is any soil that doesn't get replaced after the footer is in, it'll be graded and vegetated uh, in its location. In that pl same place. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody want to on the board? Is this a public hearing? Yes. Should be. Okay. With that, um, we'll open up the public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to address the board on this matter? Seeing none. We'll close the public hearing. Would you like to address all those comments? No, I'm <laughs> okay, so having said that, uh, this is a, just remind the board, this is a seeker. So can I get a... And it's an unlisted action, Mr. Chairman. Anybody like to do a motion? I will go ahead and do a motion that in the uh, PB 1801 dash one on the matter requested by land tech survey and planning acting as agent for Margaret Rod that we issue a um, unlisted um, seeker declaration negative. So I think the motion on the table is to recommend the issuance of a negative declaration. Yes. It's been a while since we've had a meeting. <laughs> Got rusty. Do I have a second? I'll second. Like a second. With that, all those approved, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. And there's nobody absent. That passes seeker. Okay. Can I get a motion, please? Sure. On PB 1801-1, upon the matter of request by Land Tech Survey and Planning, acting as agent for Margot Rod for a steep slope environmental protection overlay EPOD permit to construct a foundation supporting an existing sunroom on premises 36 North Point Trail in an R1 residential district, I move that we approve as submitted. Do I have a second? Second. Bernie, can we just put it with the amended drawing that was provided tonight? I take it all those who approved are okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are that, um, so this is not a preliminary site. You're, you're just entertaining and, and you've already yeah, acted on the EPOT approval, so there's right. no requirement for Front site plan review. review. Right. Okay. With all that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. That carries. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is case numbers PB 1801-2. Upon the matter request by T.Y. Lynn International, acting as agent for McDonald's USA LLC, for revised site plan approval to remodel existing facade and new drive-through signage on premises 657 Eastridge Road in a C business district. Good evening, and uh, thank you for allowing us to be uh, placed on the agenda tonight. My name is Louis Bono, Jr. I'm the owner of the location here uh, to discuss at 657 uh, East Ridge Road. Uh, my address is 760 Elm Grove Road uh, in Rochester, New York. I'm Randy Bebout, T.Y. Lynn International, 255 East Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14604. We're here to discuss the improvements that we'd like to uh, uh, make at the uh, location uh, that's listed here, uh, just modernizing the building with uh, um, I guess the easiest way to describe it is uh, making it look very similar to uh, what you see right down the road here on, uh, on Goodman, uh, right next to Goodman. 
Uh, we were here last week, uh, so um, it was very useful for us to hear some information. And as I uh, will share uh, one of the things that had brought up, uh, so tonight we just proposed the structural changes. Uh, we didn't add any landscaping uh, because we are focusing only on the structural. We um, laid out a landscaping plan when we updated it two years ago and added a side-by-side -side drive through But I will share, there. Um, as I continue to review, like I do every year, uh, there will be some updates and some uh, uh, maintenance, ongoing maintenance that I do to the landscaping, particularly around the uh, boxes that we were addressed last week. I know one uh, does seem to be uh, falling apart, and I will take care of that with my ongoing maintenance. But we're here to go ahead and uh, uh, update the menu boards, update the signage, uh, update the color along exterior and interior of the building. Uh, anything else you want to, is that it? Yeah, I'd like to, yeah, entertain any kind of questions that you guys may have. Okay. So anybody on the board have any questions? Can you just explain briefly what you intend on doing with the exterior so everybody sure. at home knows the same thing that we know okay. from having the workshop. I'll pass out renderings for you as I describe it. The biggest change that we're going to do right now currently has a mansard style roof. Uh, it's a copper mansard style roof. We're going to be removing that in its entirety. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, replacing that with, uh, from that point upwards with uh, ethos material. Uh, we're going to be painting the current brick to a, you'll see the, the color uh, there as a representation. Uh, adding arcades to the entrance and um, uh, both entrances, uh, vestibules. We are also going to be changing and removing the bump outs that we have. Uh, we have two on the front and one on the side. Uh, just streamlining the windows. Adding uh, LED lighting to the outside, updating the signage also with LED uh, lighting. Those are the biggest uh, major changes from, from the outside. Any other questions from board members? And I do have uh, color samples. Uh, this is the corrugated metal panel that runs along the top. You can see that in the colored elevation. Um, these are the actual color samples. This is the main uh, color uh, far view scope. And then this is the color that's on the arcades, the, the columns you'll see, front and the side. Questions? Okay, with that, I'd like to. Oh. Go ahead, Mary. I see you're pulling the, the front door closer to the front of the building. No, there's no there's no changes to the footprint of the building. The, the rendering you see is is a is a standard rendering. It's not specific to this building. I mean, we did submit specific building elevations, and I have those with us tonight. But the, the fact is, we're not changing the footprint of the building. The, yeah, so don't refer to the rendering as the actual look, just uh, as far as style, color, uh, and elements only. Uh, the actual elevation, as we shared, is included in the drawings. So the footprint of the building uh, will not be changing. Any other questions from the board? Nice clean color. Okay. With that, I'd like to, uh, you can have a seat, open it up for public hearing. Anybody who would like to address this matter? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Okay. So, a second to catch up here. So, I want to remind the board that there is a secret unlisted action on this. I'll go ahead and make a motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you. That um, on the matter of PB. 180-2, um, upon the matter of requested by T.Y. Lynn International, acting as agent for McDonald's USA, that we have an unlisted negative declaration regarding Seeker. Do I have a second? Sure. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. That it passes. I'd like to have a motion, please. Make a motion. 
Uh, I'd like to make a motion that on the matter of PB 1801-2, uh, submitted by TY Lynn International for 657 East Ridge Road, that we approve as submitted. Do I have a second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. It carries. Thank you. Thanks, Thank gentlemen. you for doing business in Rennes. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. May I may I add as a as a postscript, uh, you're adding some nice color and nice lines. I really am appreciative that you continually to maintain and upgrade your places. Thank you much. Thanks for Rennes or whoever we are. Next item on the agenda is case number PB 1801 3. Upon the matter of request by Fitzgerald Engineering and the Holland Trotta Project, acting as agent for Morgan, Ma Morgan Management for revised site plan approval to redevelop existing parcels to construct one new building, 6,700 square feet, with site related improvements on premises 1238 and 1258 East Ridge Road in a C business district. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the board and support staff. My name is Ray Trotta from the Holland Trotta Project. Um, here tonight, basically, this is kind of a little bit of a deja vu for the board that in May 22nd uh, board meeting, we are, uh, received preliminary and final approval for primarily the same project, except uh, the project uh, parameters changed a little bit uh, because there was two buildings before and now uh, one building we're looking at right now, but consequently the second building may come online as a completely sec uh, separate approval. That being said, I uh, just take a brief background for everybody to just explain what the project is, where the site is. Uh, currently this existing conditions plan that this is currently the former Brugger, Br Brugger Bagel site and then the quick print and then uh, um, uh, market, uh, market rate apartment housing. I'm just gonna oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about that. Can I, can I ask it, that the applicant have the drawing face a little bit more toward the audience so they can actually of see course. what you're talking Wherever, about? I was trying to get everybody. You yep. tell me we where. Got, we actually have your drawings in front of us, so I appreciate that. No, no problem. Sorry about that. Um, so basically, uh, let me just go through really quickly that this, at the corner of Portland and, and East Ridge, Basically, we have the uh, former Brugger's Bagels, Quick Print, and then the house right next door were the three sites that were approved on the previous application that were combined to a, uh, two buildings, uh, one being the Aspen Dental uh, and Five Star Urgent Care, and then the second one being a restaurant building. What we're proposing now is basically um, what happened is the second tenant did not lock in to the site per se, but they're still interested in the site. So the primary tenant being the Aspen and, and uh, Five Star Urgent Care wanted to you know, go through the site and not wait for the whole thing to develop. So what happened is we still have potentially that option to expand, but we're just concentrating on the quick print building site and also uh, the former Brugger Bagel site. Uh, the former Brugger Bagels is uh, completely owned by my client, and the I don't think they closed yet, but they're very close to closing. Uh, the actual closing date on the quick print as well, but it's cool. definitely under contract and whatnot. Uh, what we have done is uh, we had a workshop meeting, and from the last submission, it actually a couple of new points came up because we're not uh, we're not having the other building being built quite yet and also we're not impacting the other portion of the, the quick print site. So, so those comments that came up, we did address as well as uh, the engineering comments um, 
and I don't know it, which order you'd like me to go into engineering comments and then the workshop comments, how they came in. Probably makes sense for everybody. Yeah. Workshop first and then go through. Sure, that. I could definitely do that. So at the workshop, a uh, couple of key comments that came up were the desire now that this building is not being done, at least in phase one, if you will, um, it may be done in the future. What we're doing is it creates that the dumpster, the dumpster enclosure, the gates would have been blocked by a building that would be built and then you wouldn't see them at all from, uh, from Ridge Road. What the suggestion was is to, to cant it a little bit. General location was okay, but to cant it a little bit so the doors are not facing the public, if you will. So what we did is we did rotate them and we, uh, we spun so the doors are towards the back of the property. We looked at going this way and, and uh, either way, which one worked a little bit the best and we thought this was best for access. And that was one of the comments of the access to the truck coming in and also uh, for pickup and also the doors now face the back portion of the property. So we figured, we, we felt that was the best solution and no one really see it. You just see the surround of it. So you're gonna see the, the outside uh, enclosure only. Um, the second comment was uh, to clearly delineate this area right here uh, that is actual paving. That was kind of a, just a clarification that was on the house next door. Um, the comment was that really the, the house next door that was originally in the contract did not have a curb cut. In the actuality, it does. It's just kind of a long curb cut that's just open between the two properties. So they will maintain, they'll still have access, and they also, one of the comments was, and you can see that bubbled on your drawings, is to clearly delineate that there's a cross access agreement with this owner. So they will retain with the property, the house will be able to park on this as well as as the new development. So it's, it's additional parking. It doesn't change at all, but that, that was always in place. Um, other question was to just delineate this back area now that we're not showing a retaining wall um, and the back portion of the quick print property was to actually show it as snow storage and obviously it's delineated as snow storage now. It made logical sense and that's practically how they would be doing it anyway. Um, one of the, uh, one of the items as well that came up in the workshop meeting was to, the, the bike rack was actually located on the back side of the building because again, it was a complication of having two buildings before it was, it was centrally located between the two buildings, but now it, it made a lot of sense to practically move it to the, uh, the Portland side is what the suggestion was, which we were completely fine with to, uh, to make it easier for, uh, for access for bike paths and whatnot. Um, uh, to get the bike rack there, and it is secured. We we called out in the note that it is secured to the pavement, so it is right right in this area right here. Um, the other thing was from a practical. Uh, this was one of the engineering comments that that will be a ramp, ADA ramp that's connected to the crosswalk. That that was just that was just a drafting error, uh, quite frankly, that we added to the drawings. Um, I think the cross axis easement, the ramp, the bike rack. Uh, and the show of the limit of asphalt and also the bulk standards. Um, before, we said there was no change from the last submission, but we actually listed the actual bulk standards in the, in the uh, little bulk standards title block. That was just an oversight. It was just how, how we read it. Um, that being said, the engineering comments, um, one of which, of which, this was a typo, but it said non-shrink gout at the manhole. It's grout, of course. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we added that, that note and it has been corrected. Uh, type of protection for the existing drop inlets uh, was a question. We are removing the asphalt and uh, uh, stake the silt vent uh, protection to be used and the plants have been revised accordingly. Um, the sheet training on the Div DiVincenzo property there's really no other way uh, other than we're clearly delineating that this will be protected all the way during construction and there is a, a swale that will be maintained and it's part of the whole SWIP report and the drop inlets themselves, our engineer was out there and I know there was a concern that um, they were clogged and whatnot and literally he got in there and pulled out leaves with his hands and, and it just the water started flowing instantly. So it just literally has to be properly maintained and it was not properly maintained before. So once those are properly maintained, all the calcs have been done uh, and, and updated with the SWIP report, which all the grading has, has been worked out previous. 
uh, that will address the problem and, and maintain it as, as part of, of that solution. The, um, let's see, there was a question about, uh, about the parcels and just to be clear, that's actually why I was here um, before this came up in the workshop, is the, the quick print parcel actually is this area and this area. And where we're proposing that subdivision line is an administrative subdivision that we would do in the future to allow this building to, uh, to be partitioned off if they ever wanted to maintain ownership of it and develop this as well. So, so this line right here is really uh, breaking up the old quick print property. And approximately, uh, if you look at where this existing parking is right now, uh, that is the quick print building. That's right, at, it's pretty much right at the edge, just to kind of give you a, a sense of where you are. The, um, we showed all the inlets that were requested. We, uh, the uh, side roof ramps were added, as I said before, the bulk uh, standards was a comment on here and also in the workshop. Uh, we, we talked about that clean out and the inverts of the dry wells have been added uh, to the drawings. Uh, so the design assumptions have been put in the drainage report and obviously that's not for the board to review but for the, the town engineer to review but we have the entire SWIP report to them and any comments will be addressed and I have no issue with uh, uh, approval being pending obviously any engineering comments been addressed. Um, they asked for additional spots and additional contours. Um, they did ask on the lighting plan and we kind of clarified this one thing was a drafting error but uh, for clarification, and everything is bubbled on your drawings that coordinated with the, the, uh, the plans that we submitted. Um, what we did is um, we showed the contours, but we also showed the spot light uh, uh, levels as well. And just for clarification, this is five foot candles that was before and two and a half foot candles. You'll notice that there's absolutely no flooding outside the property. It's actually pretty minimal uh, lighting uh, com as comparison to what's there right now, other than they're off right now. But <laughs> I was gonna say that the lighting is fairly minimal and you can see these, uh, there's absolutely no pr uh, flooding on the outside property lines and all the contour levels are shown. It was just, I, I think the question was a valid one. It, uh, basically with the um, the vendor Cooper lighting, it was just like a very, very small text on what the contour levels were. It was unreadable. Uh, then the other miscellaneous was to uh, up obtain Monroe County Water Authority and Monroe County uh, Department of Transportation approval. We have received comments um, as of last week, which we're addressing. They're very standard comments. This went to, uh, to the town first, then we got a copy as well that are just the, the basic, um, things of, uh, you know, survey items. Um, uh, basically, we have to approve for the relocation of the sanitary sewer must be, go to the public uh, Department of Public Health. All standard uh, items that we will address every single one of them. Really, there was nothing that was called out at all in the um, <coughs> comments from the Water Authority. There also, I brought these just to show you, but last time this was already previously approved. The building itself has not changed. So the Aspen five star, the only difference with the elevations from here from what before, we showed the other building that was being approved at the same time and now we just concentrated on the, the Aspen and the five star. That being said, I'm here to address questions and thank you. Thank you for the time at the workshop too. Is there anyone on the board that has a question? Mr. Huber? For me. Ms. Hollenbeck? No. Mr. Palermo? Mr. Richards? I just, um, the area that you're not developing that is currently asphalt, yep. uh, are you guys going to maintain that or yes. what is happening with that? It'll be absolutely maintained um, in, the, in the standpoint that uh, if there is any permit that's needed to prop, most likely we would overlay it, pavement, you know, clean up the pavement, not change the pavement, but uh, clean it and 
stripe it as it is, as it stands right now. But they would want to have one consistent parking lot. Okay. We're not doing any improvements on it. But you're not going to be using that for the existing or the proposed building. We are. We they will utilize this parking lot. We don't need it though. So I mean, they, they have they have a cross access right. agreement. Excuse as me, well. Ray. Ray, yes. can we just ask you to use the microphone, please, sure, honey? Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about Thank that. Thank you. Apologize. Usually my voice carries. So. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, to answer your question, this uh, area right here, they have the right to use it, but they do not need it. So if that makes sense. So, and, and the next door neighbor also has the right, it's a cross access agreement. So they have use of the parking, they have use of the parking. And administratively so, though, you'll, you'll segregate this um, parcel from the proposed correct. building. But the easement would always remain. The easement would have to remain. Do we have a copy of that? Uh, I believe it's on file. Do you have a copy of the cross access agreement? The it would have been uh, would have been filed originally as part of. It's public record. I, I would assume. It's right. It's an it's an existing cross access correct. access easement correct. that's not being changed. Correct. That is correct. And it'll stay no matter what happens with the other property. That is correct. And then now. I, I apologize, I was going to say the, when you subdivide, we have to make sure that's clear in the subdivision that that cross access remains. I just wanted to say that. That's, yeah, that'll, that'll be. get recorded, that we, the town staff, when, when that gets reviewed, because that's an administrative review, will ensure, town engineer would typically look at that, will make sure that the cross access easement carries over to the next uh, plan and subdivision. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, two-story house that's currently rented or occupied in some fashion will still continue to be so and you guys are aware of that and you're making some precautions regarding the construction absolutely without without a question and, and part of it is is right now this it, quite frankly uh, one of the precautions just inherently is we're not touching anything on this side so right before uh, all we're doing is taking down the building at the other side of that, but there will be precautions taken during the whole thing. So everything, all the construction will be maintained on this property right here. This portion right here is the intent is basically that that subdivision line that we're creating more or less, that, that is also almost like a, a phasing construction line as well. And where will the big vehicles, construction vehicles be entering and exiting then from um, the site? Currently, well, that that's a kind of a loaded question because we, we definitely have to have Monroe County approval of where they want it to be. Right. So it may temporarily be in the uh, the ingress and egress point until it's closed. I, I don't know how they want it done yet. So they would definitely circulate in this way and out this way. I'm not sure if they're gonna use this curb cut or this curb cut when construction starts. I would prefer that we use the existing curb cut until it's closed for your exact point so it keeps everything away from here. Okay. But I don't know what the, uh, we, we haven't heard their preference on where they want, want it out. So it, it'll be up to the county DOT. All right. And um, my, my uh, renewed request is that sidewalk going down Portland at least till the end of your <coughs> property line. I know initially you agreed to it, and then at the workshop you said that that would be too expensive with only one building. Well, we we actually that... in the approval we got uh, we we talked about the pros and cons in, it, in the original approval, and right. it was it was basically left that it, it would be a sidewalk to nowhere, and and the the sidewalk would be connected over this side. So I I guess that would be I wouldn't be against doing the sidewalk. It was the reason why we went up. It's it's going to be the town's responsibility to maintain it. Right. To to uh, you know that. If, if that was a part of approval, a condition of approval that that uh, that we had to build it, and then it, it just kind of, what I was saying, my my thought was our original approval, everyone was on board with doing it as we were showing it. Now we're only doing half the project, and we're required to do it. Was kind of more of a financial burden because the economy of scale. We're not building the other half. If we could, if we could have if. I would prefer, and I, I'm sure the client would, if this goes forward, that we do that, because we were willing to do that at the time, I'm sure. But if, if it was the end of the day, it was a make or break thing, I'm sure we could work it yeah, out. Yeah, my point being that it would be a nice opportunity for, 
excuse me, to do something for the town um, that will be doing something for the developer. Oh, sure. And if you're saying that because it's only one building and it's not an economy of scale, well, the next building that's further away would be less of an economy as far as I would be concerned, so. Correct, correct. But it, I, and the only the only reason I was saying that is before we're, we're half the size of the project, so it's, so that that's the only reason I brought. I they, with no all one the money you're saving, though, you could it. spend it on the sidewalk. Yeah, there, there you, well, well, the and the only thing from my standpoint on on building the sidewalk, I'm not as concerned about the cost. It's just a timing thing, more or less, when you start because it's a county approval for the sidewalk rather than. I'm not going to so. belabor it. My fellow board members can consider it all. Sure, but sure. Thank you very much, and thank you for. Uh, no responding so good to the uh, the workshop and you're very welcome, Mr. Reed. Good, Mr. Evil. Uh, I have nothing other than to say I think I was one of the, the folks that was not a big fan of the sidewalk. So I don't know if I echo Alan's comments, um, but uh, uh, everything else you moved the snow, which which was kind of a big sticking point for me. So I appreciate that. So with that, if you have a seat, we'll open it up for Absolutely. public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to address this matter? Please come to the podium. Please state your name and address. Please address everything. To, please address I reside the at 1268 East Ridge Road, the property next door. It is residential and commercial. If I put a business downstairs, I need all that parking. I live upstairs and I got to go through these buildings and everything. It's crazy. I have mutual park in there. Who's going to do the plowing? Who does the salting? I used to split it with quick print. Don't know what's going on there. Another dumpster, DVs, Rabinos, mice, rats, a lot of traffic. It's crazy. It's a residential piece. You know, I mean, that's just my point of view. I live there. That's my backyard. Is there something you'd like different? I'm just was trying huh? to understand. Was there something you wanted different? I didn't catch well, it. Well, who's going to split the, the plowing and the salting? And I we'll, we'll let the applicant answer those questions. I'm sorry, what? We'll let the applicant answer that okay. after you're done. But Sir, is there anything else, though, before you step away? No, I just want to know what's going on with the parking lot and all the parking. And I got a business downstairs, residential upstairs. If I rent it out and there's kids there playing in the parking lot, I mean, it just seems a little off to me. I'm sorry, sir. I missed your name for the record. Over here, your name Rick for the Tamby. record. Rick? Yep, T-A-M-B-E. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Is there anybody else who would like to address the board? With that, would the applicant like to please come back and address any of the questions? Uh, just to address Mr. Tamby's concerns, uh, first of all, the the um, owner, the new owner that I represent, plans on maintaining the entire thing at no cost to you at all. So it's not split. He's got it. So that that's the the first item. The second item is uh, as far as the concern of dumpsters and rats. You're coming from a a bagel restaurant. That is going to be now a dental hey, Ray, office. Ray, Ray, you got to address the board. Oh, the sorry, board. sorry, yeah. sorry about that. I was trying to talk about that. That's now going to be a, a dentist and also a urgent care. So the type of use by nature is not going to have as much a demand. Uh, most of it, if there's any medical related waste, it's immediately taken out and doesn't go in the dumpster anyway. So, so I think the concern of the restaurant type of dumpster. I mean, it, a restaurant, I don't disagree with them, but before there was a restaurant, it was, it was taking that property, so it wouldn't even have been a concern, you know, because that wouldn't, that wouldn't be the next door neighbor anymore because that building would come down. So in this case, being that this is just the use, I think some of those, some of those concerns do go away. And obviously, I can't convince you that. It would just be a matter of time to just show you that. That's all. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'm going to close the public hearing. Bernie.
Can I just ask staff a question real quick? Sure. Um, just for clarification, based on public comment, the two lots that we're looking at here, 1238 and 1258, are both zoned commercial, correct? Correct. Any other questions before we proceed? And just as a further clarification, all of the parcels along that stretch of East Ridge Road, East Ridge Road in its entirety is zoned either C business or M manufacturing. There may be some outliers on the very eastern and western ends, um, but in this heart of the corridor, it's C business. So, I believe this is a negative unlisted action. It, it's an unlisted action, but the board would have to entertain whether a, a negative yeah, declaration is uh, correct. Yep. So, with that, is there anybody who would like to make a motion? I'll go ahead and make one. On the um, PB 1801 3, upon the matter of Fitzgerald Engineering, the Holland Trotta project, acting as an agent for Morgan Management, that uh, we that this be an unlisted action and that the board declared a negative um, declaration. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. that I'd like a, a motion I, I took two notes and I want to check with the town attorney that it requires all engineering comments to be addressed in addition Monroe County Water and Department of Transportation approval required do I need to put those as conditions those would be appropriate conditions for the board to entertain as part of a motion yes right. do, do we need to make the administrative subdivision approval part of our no, no you that's do not. okay all right so I guess with that, I'll go ahead and make the motion. Upon the matter of PB 1801-3, upon the matter of request by Fitzgerald Engineering and the Holland Trotta Project, acting as agent for Morgan Management for revised site plan approval to redevelop the existing parcels to construct one new building, 6,700 square feet, with one site related improvements on premises 1238 and 1258 East Ridge Road in a C business district. With the following conditions, all engineering comments to be addressed and the Monroe County Water and Department of Transportation approvals are required. With that, is there a second? I'll second. I would still like to put forth the uh, amendment on the sidewalk just for board consideration. I know that there wasn't much support to it, but the developers already agreed to do it. And I don't see any harm in extending it at least to the end of his property on the Portland Avenue side of the, the project. So you're, you want to amend or you want to add? I would like to add that to it or amend the motion is what it technically would be, but just to add it. But I, I'm not seeing any support here on the board, and if there isn't any, then I want to move along because I don't want to delay this. But why don't you ask that as a separate question then? If we have, I mean, we could go along with it if you, if you garnish up a major. Michael, excuse me, Mr. Plamer, use your microphone for me, please. Uh, you want me to speak louder? No, I want you to use your microphone. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. I didn't pay attention to that, Alan. Um, could you poll us and see if you have a majority of us that would favor the, the sidewalk? And if so, we could include it. If not, we don't. You comfortable with that? Or can we do well, that? You, you can do that. I just yeah. wanted to clarify the motion that's on the table. So right now there's there's a motion on the table to approve the revised site plan subject to the two conditions that Bernie read and as part of the discussion. Which was um, seconded, so that's why I gotta ask you procedurally. Yep, so so you can you can discuss that motion that's been seconded. Um, and then 
pending the discussion, there may be a desire to, to either amend that motion before it's approved or denied. Um, you can still do that. Okay, so there's a request to amend the proposal as I stated it. The person who seconded it, would you um, care to pull that back at the second? And, or? Yeah, I think we could talk about it. Okay. So, Alan, you'd like to propose that they go forward with the sidewalk. I just don't recall. Did we require them to do that sidewalk when it was both buildings before? No. We did not require it, but he agreed to it at that time if that's what the board um, desired as a condition. I have a question. If the second building does come to fruition, this other area will already have been Developed. approved. Yes. And so will we probably won't have the ability to go back into the site plan that's already been approved oh, and ask for a sidewalk the there, second. would we? So I believe when it comes before us, it'll be just the property just the in question, right. correct? Correct. So yeah. So it would be question. now or probably we would not have that option. It's now or trust me, right. Right. So. <laughs> Is that correct? Correct. Now or never. Yeah. So. It, I mean, there are certain benefits that come with a corner lot and there are certain negatives that come with a corner lot. It's it's a good lot to have because it has a lot of sight and a lot of a lot of traffic and a lot of people going by. And so I feel that you have to take the good with the bad, that it's a great lot because it is highly visible and has a lot of pros, but then then you have to put in the sidewalk. So you, you want the sidewalk? Okay. Ms. Negative. Hall, Negative? I'm in the sidewalk. I'm actually for the sidewalk myself. I, Mr. Reed? I think. I know you I know where you stand. <laughs> I, I feel we approved it last time without it. We had a lot of discussion about it and discussed the fact that it is a sidewalk to nowhere. There's some great issues. There's some signage along that road. I, I don't see it being used. I'm all for sidewalks, but I don't see it being used there. So I'm a, I'm a no on that. I, I, I'm a no for the same reasons we discussed when we approved this previously, and, and as Spencer just recalled, it, it doesn't go anywhere, and you're going to have people walk down it, and they're going to try and cross Portland Avenue mm -hmm. 50 feet from the crosswalk, and they're going to be crossing out into traffic, and I can see it happening, and I understand what the what the end goal is here, and I understand what the, what the hope is, and that's that the sidewalk can continue all the way down Portland Avenue, but being realistic, I don't know that that's going to happen, and I don't want to have a sidewalk to nothing. So. My two colleagues have changed my mind. So uh, what I would suggest is, is call for a motion again, have a second, and then there could be an up or down vote. So the motion is amended to include the sidewalk? Is that what I'm... If, if someone will make that motion. We can let it die. It's obviously not going to go anywhere. The other thing that I was thinking about is um, on the original approval... We um, wanted the sign to come back to us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, signage oh, has that's to correct. come back. But the signage has to come back, right? My understanding is that the applicant intended for the signage to go, excuse me, the signage to come back separately with um, once the building closer, closer to construction and that um, the owner and or sign um, manufacturer would be the one to make application for that. And that and would I'm, be to the board or to the staff? No, uh, in this instance, because it's associated with a new, de newly developed site, typically it would come to the planning board. It's when an existing site is replacing signage that there's the administrative review option. So do I need to include that as a condition, or can I include that? You can, yes. Okay. And I'll go ahead and, Mr. Chair, withdraw my amendment regarding the sidewalk. So I would suggest asking for a new motion just as a point of clarity. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare the last motion dead and start a new one. In regards to PB 1801-3, upon the matter of request by Fitzgerald Engineering and the Holland Trotta Project, acting as agent for Morgan Management for revised site plan approval to redevelop existing parcels to construct one new building, 6,700 square feet, with site-related improvements 
on premises 1238 and 1258 East Ridge Road in a C business district with the following conditions. All engineering comments are addressed. Monroe County Water and Department of Transportation approval required and new signage must be must come before the board for approval. With that, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. It carries. Thank you for doing business. Thank you very much. And just for clarification, for uh, that sidewalk, um, we were fine with t uh, carrying it to the property line, but there is a six foot grade difference. So we would essentially have a diving board because the other property owner would have to come to it. You know what I'm saying? You'd have to change it between the two different, even Chenzel's driveway if you go over there. That's why I was just Okay, it's not on there, so you're good. So, no problem. Okay, thank you. <laughs> item on the agenda is case number PB 1801-4 upon the matter of request by I square LLC for preliminary final site plan approval and steep slope and water course environmental protection overlay EPOD district permits associated with the expansion of the I square development located on premises 775 and 795 Titus Avenue 50 51 60 61 71 81 and 93 Lorraine Drive in a mixed-use commercial district. Before you start, please. So um, yeah. before we start this tonight, I just want to make sure the public understands that um, we're not going to be ruling on this tonight, only because we don't have the full application. So in case anybody's here staying for that purpose, I just wanted to let them know that. We will be having a public hearing. However, I just want to make sure everybody knew that. And just to supplement the, the chairman's intro, maybe could I ask staff to give an update on the application process and, and where we stand? Yeah, so the application um, prior to this board rendering a decision, the application is un currently under review by Monroe County Planning um, under 239M referral, which is required. And so local decision can't take place until that occurs. Additionally, um, because the proposed site plan includes an EPOD or the issuance of an EPOD permit um, for water course and steep slope along a, a portion of the site, the um, conservation board needs to review the application and that won't be taking place until the February 7th meeting for conservation board. And so the planning board is initiating the um, application process this month, but would not be able to conclude it um, at the earliest until it's February meeting. That, please go for Thank it. you, good evening. Mike Nolan, representing I-Square with offices at 400 Bakers Park here in Arondequoit. Um, thank you for having me on the agenda tonight. Um, uh, Ms. Ivers has been wonderful about keeping me in the loop as far as the status and what was gonna happen tonight, and I really appreciate that, so uh, makes a more predictable process. Um, we're excited to be here. We're excited to um, be considering expanding the I-square footprint so that we can build it as Wendy and I originally dreamed up. Um, to build it out to the 92, 94,000 square feet that was originally approved by the planning board in 2013 um, will be, um, will hopefully come to fruition just over a larger footprint. Um, originally it was planned over a, about a 2.5 acre area and um, quickly realizing with the growth and um, um, popularity of the market at I Square uh, quickly outgrew that. Um, infrastructure that we had built in, mainly parking. Um, on the other side of it, we had built all the infrastructure to, co to construct all seven buildings and uh, invested quite a bit in that and um, had all ready to go and didn't really need um, a lot of further investment in it. By expanding the project to the east, we kind of start back at square one, um, no pun intended, but um, the, um, we have to, uh, new sewer, new water main, new um, stormwater system, a lot of different um, 
things that we've done once or we're back to doing again, but in the excited way, because we really do want to see this through as originally planned. Um, back in August, the town board voted to, uh, along with the uh, West Rendequite School Board, to include the additional list of parcels that was read off to you in the project. Um, further, in November, the town board voted to uh, expand the mixed-use commercial zoning code across those parcels and uh, applying one um, contiguous um, development code all the way from Hudson to the intersection at where Titus Mower is at Hedgegar, uh, which we uh, really are, were in favor of to um, see the mixed-use commercial code really fits well with I-Square's vision of what we'd like to see and how we would like to develop the area. And um, it served as a tremendous guide for us over the years as we've developed our plans. Um, when expanding to the east, and namely on the Vercruzzi property, um, had some different elements that we hadn't um, had to think through uh, with the original footprint of I-Square, which was all concrete, sidewalks, parking lots, buildings, and very minimal green space. The Vercruzzi property houses it really a serene, beautiful um, two-acre parcel in the back that um, really isn't fitting for the exact same style that we had originally planned. So we adapted our plans to develop um, the backside of that to a cottage style or a uh, patio home style um, senior living community. Uh, 21 residences located in there. Um, some of them as standalone um, apartments and then others that are conjoined together. Uh, as you'll see on the plans, but um, as part of this change, it, this is eliminating what would be from our original plans, Building 6 and Building 7, um, which we had talked about in prior uh, planning meetings as we had uh, converted both those areas over to parking. The, um, <clears throat> the land that at Vercruzzi, which will be where most of the development happens, um, we really see using that property as it has been used in the past, We're trying to site buildings where buildings were in the past, trying to site some of the homes where the greenhouses were in the past, um, and take advantage and keep the um, uh, stable building, which is a brick, beautiful um, two-story barn on the property that um, you can see from Titus. And um, we uh, plan to restore that building. and. Um, make that inhabitable and usable and um, bring in a uh, small brewery, a small batch brewery or microbrewery as the term is today. Um, in the larger building, in the um, 15,000 square foot building shown, uh, we'd like to see it in retail and specifically in food or grocery. A uh, small model, not quite the uh, size of an Aldi's, but something um, largely upgraded over the drugstore model that's common today. Um, and then in the back, the uh, senior living. The utilities uh, will all come in off of Titus Avenue and some off of Lorraine Drive. Our sewer will exit both onto Lorraine Drive and onto Titus. The water main will come in off of the Titus water main um, along with electric utilities and um, um, phone and cable and whatnot. The area that is um, specifically in the EPOD zoning of the map and spelled out on there, we really have no intention and no reason to touch it whatsoever. There's, a real, there's kind of a very natural boundary uh, for those of us who walk the property on Sunday. Uh, you can kind of see, and that's the appropriate place where our silt fencing and our swoop plan will come into play but also the end of our development or our disruption of the land. Um, so all the development, all the utilities, all the underground infrastructure, uh, the only one thing that would um, cross that at all would be the fence um, with very, very minimal interruption. Um, so we really tried to work with the lay of the land um, and what's there. We tried to apply a lot of the same green infrastructure, conservation, and um, um, forward thinking plans that we've incorporated thus far in the primary I-square area. Um, obviously with the alteration that we'll have a whole lot more green space here to work with. So some of the stormwater techniques that we used, um, swell or uh, rain gardens and the um, 
underground storage tanks aren't necessary on this property where we still will use pervious concrete uh, walks and dry aisles parking areas, uh, especially on the part up by Titus Avenue. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to finishing, it, finishing this thing out and I uh, would like your guys' support. Um, certainly open for questions. So, Mr. Noll, um, from the, um, the workshop, you still don't know elevations or how the, it's going to look yet? or That is forthcoming. It's really, there isn't a lot of change from the light of land. I think the people that visited with me yesterday really see it's got a very natural um, course that because we're building where the uh, existing structures are, we really don't have a um, lot of change to the current elevations. It is uh, being topographically mapped out the front half of it, which wasn't previously, um, and that will be forthcoming by your next workshop. We'll have all that information. In fact, we're, uh, our goal is to have that together for the conservation board meeting, which is on February 7th. And what about the buildings themselves? Do you have any more on what they're going to look like? Uh, the, the buildings, we are not asking for your approval to build the building that's up on Titus Avenue, and in the same light as Building 5, um, that the we're really a good site plan approval overall approval we would uh, the barn is already existing at the parking and at the uh, senior living community in the back which we did provide the elevations or conceptual elevations for and I, I think you also mentioned that um, you have a, a reason to do this by a certain date for the parking lots for the pervious we do the front area where we want to install the pervious parking on Titus uh, that's partly funded by the state of New York um, through Environmental Facilities Corporation. That grant expires on June 30th, um, and so we are anxious to get that in place, but also to get the overall site plan approval because below that pervious will be the infrastructure and the sewer, water main, and you know electric needs to feed the entire um, property. And for the public, could you just go over which buildings you plan on taking down on Lorraine Drive and which ones you plan on keeping? Correct. On Lorraine Drive, um, if you're driving down the road, it'd be the last two on the left, um, which is where the drive aisle from the rear of the senior area will come up onto. Um, that would be um, 50 and 60 Lorraine. And on the um, west side of Lorraine Drive, it would be 81, 71, 61 uh, in short order um, with 93 and 51 coming down at a later date. And 43. Thank you. Is there anybody else on the board who has questions? Mr. Huber? Um, just a couple of uh, big things about uh, the overall site plan um, that I pointed out during workshop. Um, so nothing new, just um, concerns about the connectivity from the senior living complex through the parking lot to the existing I-square development. Um, the L that we've kind of kept coming around to on building five um, since you're picking up so much more parking in the a lot more parking if it's possible to extend building five so that we have um, a full facade on Titus Avenue and blocking the parking um, driveways and sidewalks that we talked a little bit about at workshop over in the area with the cottages the, some of the planning board members were unsure about how they felt about the parking being in front of the house. Um, I, I'm wondering if there's other solutions out there that could be explored. Um, the retail building in the front is listed as one story. And I know we talked a little bit about making sure that if it is one story, maybe it at least has the look of a two-story building from the street. Um, and then I'm really interested to see what the conservation board says about the fencing that goes through um, in it, the creek and stuff like that and what kind of an impact that might have on wildlife or whatever that are going through there. Um, I'd like to see what their thoughts are. Yes, um, and most of that feedback I had noted and taken from the um, workshop and some of it is still in the works. Um, the one, um, the connectivity thing is a very, very uh, hot topic with us, but we're also cautious to respect the current residents of Lorraine sure. Drive and not create something that wasn't there before. Um, and But we would um, hope to um, create that one day as we um, hope to continue to develop that road. 
um, but I agree with you on the building height when we get to that store. Uh, it should be a taller building, at least in that 18, 19 foot range, and which kind of gives the feel of a multi-story. And we'll certainly, but we would, uh, our request for approval does not include that building, the construction of that building and building five, um, so that specifically we do come back and talk about the, you know, if we don't have the elevations of the building materials, um, we would imagine we'll build them very similar um, in construction to the other buildings we've constructed at I-Square. Yeah, yeah, understood. Just wanted to get, I think overall, you know, it looks like a good plan. Those are just like the, you know, I talk to students and they, why are you saying so many bad things? I'm not. I'm just, those, <laughs> are, those are just the things that jumped out at me. <laughs> uh, it's all fair game, right? Thank you. Ms. Holman? Nothing. I'm sorry, Ms. Boyle. You're all set? I'm all set. Mr. Richards. Um, I would like to see a lot more flushed out here. For staff, can we get a better idea of exactly what we're being asked to approve for um, either tonight or some future date? I'm not really sure if I'm approving cottages, which I was just told I was not approving or was not being asked to consider by the applicant. So the plan, as it was presented to us, has a lot of information, but very little information that will make it helpful for me to help Mr. Nolan to continue this um, program. I was one of the two folks that um, got the opportunity to look at the project yesterday firsthand. There seems to me that there's going to have to be some earth moving and things like that. I'm not even sure how this road is being constructed or where it's exiting out onto Lorraine. And to that, are we considering any of Lorraine Drive in this application? So I guess. That's for staff only, and I. Actually, what I would, I'm actually going to defer and indicate that the applicant, if you need that uh, clarification, perhaps um, you can ask the applicant to provide a written description or narrative to describe exactly what's being requested as far as approvals. Um, and I, because I'm, I could You're tell you, off of his cue. I could tell you what I think it is based on what I've heard the applicant say. However, I think it's probably better for everyone, uh, staff included, if the applicant provides a detailed description um, and either um, in a narrative form or in a visual form to indicate what is being sought for preliminary and what's being sought for final. Yeah, th that would be very helpful to, to me to help you. I think that the project's going to be very cool once it's done, but we need to make sure that we're all working together and rowing toward the same goal. Um, Can a I topographical, um, yeah, anything you, you want to Tell just me just on the cottages, I did not mean to exclude that from my, my request for approval in this. The, the building uh, that goes up front, we do not expect that to be part of this approval, nor building five, which is on the original site that there's been a lot of talk about Elling, uh, the shape of the building along Titus. <coughs> Those are the only two structures that we didn't have included. We were hoping this uh, approval site plan and would include the cottages. And, okay, uh, so, so, we had so if we see a plan that will have more detail on what the elevations are. I'm going to see a topical plan, top tropical plan for the um, elevations of the land itself, mm -hmm. um, the width of the driveway that you're proposing, um, as well as a list of everything that you're asking us to consider. I mean, is do you want us to consider Lorraine Drive? Obviously, we don't yes. have any say so in any of the uh, demolition um, programs as a ministerial. Um, function it doesn't come to this board, but are you having us look at new construction on Lorraine? No, there's no. Well, there's just the parking lot area and the drive aisle that comes out. The exit from the um, rear cottage area comes up onto Lorraine right th uh, through where 60 um, currently uh, sits, and um, the parking lot on the west side of the road is part of this approval. But it's only site work on that on Lorraine. We're not building, constructing any buildings. We still have a number of homes that are occupied that um, it wouldn't be, it's not the right time to build anything on that road. So working with staff, then we can get more of this information. I mean, and I can spell it out in a narrative like Carrie suggested. I think that would help everybody I think a bit. And I tried to say it at the beginning here, but I think I bumbled a couple of things. I'm sorry. Well, and there's some things that I'm going to be asking about. Like, I know we want to do a brewery there, which I think is a fantastic idea. How are the vehicles um, for the patrons going to be accommodated as well as for deliveries because it doesn't happen on its own? I mean, the same thing with the retail space. I mean, 
I think I want a little bit more information flushed out on some of those things. And I, I know that you'll be able to get it to us, and I hope that we all can work toward the same thing. I realize that the one goal is trying to save um, the uh, contract you have with the state. And believe me, I want to help you with that as much as I can. Thank you. That's all that I have for tonight. Mr. Reed? Um, I, I think broad brush. I think it's, it's a nice looking concept here. Um, Brad stole my thunder and took almost all my comments. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to just echo uh, thoughts about the connectivity between this development and your other project. I understand your comments, but I think that's something that we need to continue to look for and talk about moving forward. Um, I, I do see that you know this this community being kind of a walkable type community, and that those folks, I'm assuming, and, and hopefully will also uh, patronize the rest of your businesses. Um, so I think that's something that we probably want to continue to talk about. Uh, and I actually had written down a comment also about how the fence is going to cross the stream. That's a, a I think some details for the conservation board would be helpful there. Um, Topo will also help answer some of those questions, I think, a little bit too. So um, I think broad brush, it, it's it's very intriguing. It's, it's conceptual, I think, good. I eagerly await more details. Thank you. Mr. Evelyn? Brad has a way of stealing people's comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, he makes a good sport of it. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly what everyone has echoed. I think it's a great idea. Um, I think it's going to end up being a, a pretty neat thing. I'm sort of, I'm sort of uh, dismayed that they're going to be 55 and over houses because they seem to look pretty cool. And um, m maybe I can fake it, you know. Um, I got it. I'd fit in well. Um, the only real sort of outlier comment I had is um, you had mentioned in the workshop that this is going to be sort of a closed community. You'd fence the road so it wouldn't be, it'd be a private drive, not a right. not an open road. I'm just wondering where you're going to locate the fences um, so that you can maintain parking for the grocery store um, and the brewery and also maintain that fence with the security because here it looks like you'd be cutting off the whole parking lot if you put a fence in and I, I can't find anywhere a fence would go. So. Correct. The fen I believe the drive aisle is going to remain open in and out of the development, but the rear where the wooded sides of it or where it's opposing another neighbor's property, that's where the fence lies. So we didn't draw it across the area from okay. the okay. rear or across that no gate or anything like that. At this point, we would um, hope that we don't ever have a need for that, you know, but um, it will be privately maintained, privately cared for. Um, everything within that parcel will be um, um, privately maintained. I, 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 do, I do like the idea of, of leaving the road. I th see, I was under the impression you were going to put a fence up across the road mm -hmm. and, and keep the whole thing closed. I like the idea of having the road open. Um, I know, you know, hopefully you wouldn't have any issues, but I know I would like to drive back there and look at them once they're done, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to do that. So um, I think that would be an important thing, and it doesn't seem like it would be a huge cut through. So that, that puts that at ease for me. Um, otherwise... Like everyone has echoed, more details would be awesome, uh, but I really like what you've got going so far. Thank you. And thank you, guys. Uh, Mr. Nolan, at the workshop, I can't remember if you said it earlier tonight, these properties are going to only be for rent, though, correct? You can't That is correct. These. Under the agreement with the town county schools, I, I have to retain ownership of all the I-Square properties for 25 years. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? Yes. Um, so, Mr. Nolan, you, you indicated that you, you aren't looking for the retail building on the corner as far as building approval, nor approvals for five, but you would be for the cottages and the uh, apartment or multi-tenant building. Is that correct so far? Which apartment multi-tenant uh, building? The, the building that has the six or seven, one, two, three, six tenants here. Oh, yes, yes, those buildings. That, that's right. what we're looking for, the cottage. Would you anticipate then when you come back that at least some of those buildings, I know there's a lot of different cottages, so we probably don't need an elevation of every single one, assuming that they're pretty duplicative, uh, that you would have some elevations for those buildings then when you came back if we're approving those? We're aiming for that. Um, we hadn't gotten that far. We did submit a, a the elevations and drawings from a concept plan from another development that's very, very close to the to style, building materials, uh, height-wise, everything that's in your packet that um, uh, we did with the color in, including landscape. Yes, that's correct. I have a question. 
um, the brewery, is that a place where you will be making the beer only, or will that be a place where people can come and have it as well, just because it kind of, that, that's a big difference. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a um, microbrewery or brew pub, meaning pe people can enjoy on premise. Okay. Um, we can fill growlers, um, we can sell retail, um, and um, the, there's not a lot of space, so it's 1,100 square foot building. And, and the, this some, parking area in front is what's going to accommodate that, right? Correct, okay. and there's a little bit along the side there. I think there's another yep. handful of spots. Yep. Mr. Chair, if I may, I just want to encourage the rest of my uh, fellow board members to um, take a tour. I want to thank Michelle for setting that up and for Mr. Nolan and his staff for uh, accommodating us when we were able to do that. But it really does open up your eyes to the uh, contours of the property and uh, the overall project. So it would be very good. And thank you for letting me make that point. Anybody else have anything? Okay. So you can have a seat. We are going to open the public hearing tonight, but we will not be closing the public hearing tonight. So if anybody sees me, grab that. <laughs> right, I'll stop. You know. So we'll open the public hearing. Anybody who would like to speak about this, please come to the podium. Good evening, Jeff Goldblatt, 128 Parkside Crescent. I am a founding member and co-chair of Helping Around a Quite Plan for Progress, now entering our 20th year of success. Uh, since there is more information coming in, as the chair has stated, and more details coming in from the applicant, I just wanted to state that we reserve the right to submit final written comments from us and verbal comments from us once all information is in before this board. And we're also waiting for, we had spoken with the uh, town supervisor about a demolition permit. Uh, we're waiting to hear back whether that's going to become a town board matter. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak at this time? With that, I will put the public hearing on hold. Correct. Mr. Okay. Chair, can I make a motion that we adjourn this issue, PB 1801-4, until next month, February's meeting? And the public hearing remains open. And the public open. hearing will remain open. Is that a motion? Yes. Yep. Do I have a second? Sure. With that, I believe that concludes. Uh, it, well, take a vote, take on, a that. vote on that. Oh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, that passes. And with that, we look forward to getting more information. Thank you. item for board action on the bottom. So do, would you like to speak to that? Would Michelle? you like me to provide an introduction to this? Do you have, does Michelle have to uh, introduce it or no? Well, it's, it's an item for board action. So then it's there's no formal uh, motions required in order for you to take it up. OK, would um, you please tell us about this item? I can, I'd be happy to. <laughs> um, uh, as we discussed at the uh, workshop last week, the town board at its, la at its January meeting, um, initiated um, a, or put forth a proposed local law to amend town code chapter 235, article 26, and other references to what is now currently called the Tourism and Resort Development District. Uh, the town board is looking to amend this portion of the code in its, in its entirety. Um, you all received a copy of that. Um, a proposed amendment with language um, that essentially, um, well, first things first, it changes the name of the district um, to um, the Ridge Road Plan Development District. It also then takes what was formerly a separate master plan document that outlined bulk and use requirements and design standards and criteria for the district 
and blends it into the, the code directly versus being um, identified in a separate document and then makes modifications to some of those provisions that were originally advanced, um, you know, 10 years or more, because the original code was written to respond to a very specific site plan that was being proposed with a former development that shall go nameless this evening. Um, so now with new ownership, um, a, a, a broader plan potentially for redevelopment, it makes sense to um, update the code to make sure that it's consistent with the other portions of town code and that it provides the town staff and, the, and any boards that may need to review applications in the, fo in the future with you know, guidance on um, development preferences and allowable uses. How is that for an, is that okay? That's a wordy introduction, I apologize. <laughs> for the viewing members at home. The only thing you didn't state is, is why did they originally put it in place, if you knew? So there was originally, the original TRR code district language was actually created as um, in conjunction with the Medley Center. And so th if you'll note, the original and current code really speaks a lot to what was originally conceived as the redevelopment plan. And now that is um, not the same as what might be possible or probable um, here in the town of Ronaquite in those parcels. And so the district is looking at um, anything that was formerly or currently called TRR would be, be um, changed to the Ridge Road Plan Development District and the proposed um, code changes are as stated and provided in the amendment. So we discussed this at length at the, um, at the workshop. Is there anybody on the board? And we'll start with the right side first. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eastwood. I'm going to use Huber. Um, I, I, I read through it, and um, I didn't, I mean, I know we discussed at length some of the, some of the intricacies of, of it, at the, at the, and I didn't really have a problem with it. I'm, I'm glad to see we're going to shake off you know, a little bit of Medley Center and kind of put that behind us, which is, which is a good thing. So, just as one um, point of clarification, um, God, that was going to be a good thought. I'm sorry, I was trying to hold it until you were done, and I just forgot what I was going to say. I'll come back to me. I'm sure it will. Mr. Reed, uh, I just had one very specific comment. Um, I don't have a page number, but there's a chart under the section signage number two, and it says wall mounted signage shall be ten, allowed 10% 10 of the building face, and I think we need to add a not to exceed something. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, and, and um, our deputy town attorney can certainly correct me. The, if the board wants to specify either as a body or even individually potential modifications or changes, certainly can do that. There will be a public hearing and as part of the whole process, and so that could be entered in and received by staff or and the town board for consideration in future revisions. Um, you can do that collectively as a board and include that as part of your report um, to the town board, but your charge is to make report. And so if that's a recommendation you'd like to make to the town board, then we can include that as part of the report to the town board. Yeah, so, so as Carrie indicated, your function tonight is to issue a report. You don't necessarily need to recommend approval or denial, but you should definitely give technical comments that you have, those should go to the town board for their consideration. And then if there's a sentiment of the board about whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, you can certainly share that as well. But there's no requirement that you, you come down on it one way or the other. So, well, I, I'm sorry, the point I was trying to make is the comments you're making are, this is what goes into the yeah. report. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't, I mean, if we're gonna do it as a board comment, that's that's fine, or, or if not, I'll just submit it on my own as a public yeah, hearing so I'll, comment. I'll, t I'll take note of what's okay. being said and then we can repeat them at the end. Cool. Thanks, Rob. Yep. Mr. Richards. I had, that was one of my concerns. I do have quite a few concerns. I talked to Rob. He said I should probably express them as opposed to, and I, I'll read through them quickly, and I know I don't need answers. Um, I think, I'm not sure what the separation of usage is between a laboratory and a residential, if those could be combined in the same location. 
So in mixed use, it, honestly, the mixed use can be a lot of things, either in a building or on a site. So mixed buildings on a site or mixed use in a, in a given building. Obviously, the any future development would have to um, adhere to state and federal regulations. And so there are some things that a health department or a state or federal reg regulating agency would say, no, that can't be there. It's too close to this or it's too close to that. Um, the the code was written so that the mixed use could happen organically and or be controlled by other parties that might have a higher authority than the town. I guess I would just wanted to make sure that I couldn't move in and decide I wanted to live in a residential portion of it, but create a laboratory at the same time next to my neighbors. Build building code also wouldn't allow that. Right. Just so you know. But I'm just... Um, not that this is a big issue, but the refuge areas, I didn't see anything about that on the, uh, in the uh, code about it. And we don't have to, you don't have to go through all these. These are just things that I had. Um, the, uh, the, I am assuming that when I read in 235, 70, 175, that's the approval part of the signage would be a ministerial approval if it, as long as it fell within that part of the code. But then when I get to 235.176F, that that would be a different portion that may have to come somewhere else. So the, um, the provisions that you see under 235.175 outline the various levels of review so it indicates under the administrative review the the limit to which you could get a sign approval if it's meets the if it's under the threshold that's been set up the section a ministerial for, approval for yeah so administrative right. by town um, the community development director would be the person who could authorize or and approve um, under the under that section anything that meets that criteria the the code requirements further along in the back indicate the full limit that w the board, this board or administratively could be reviewed. Beyond that would be subject to a variance from the ZBA. And so that's the distinction. Okay. So up front is administrative review. So it's not the full amount of things that could be done. It's the things that could be done without having to come before planning board for because it's sort of deemed ministerial in nature. And then the latter and later in the um, uh, in the code is the full limits that are expressed for things like signage and uh, parking requirements and things like that. Great. Um, that gave me a chance under um, a permitted uses, mm -hmm. the beginning section. It has in their parking lot. It would not ever be possible for somebody to just make that into a commercial parking lot, right? So. Um, the the parking lot that that the park profession I'm sorry what number was that you want to tell me the um, number? number sixteen that's okay under A so th um, typically th you'll note that we have this allowed currently under our C business and manu manufacturing as well the parking lot as an entity and I think it's uh, um, it's intended as maybe a potentially a parking garage if a parking garage was needed on the site to sometimes those can be operated for monetary gain. Okay. Or do you know what I mean? There might be some arrangement where it's built for a specific thing. That's what it's allowing there. I'm just also thinking of downtown when I look at vacant lots that are now parking lots. I, they didn't start off that way. Yeah, so they're indicating that that would be an allowable use. So a parking facility structure could be, because it's, it's sitting here for monetary gain, either as an independent um, operation or as an accessory to an ex use. In other words, business, business A and over here needs the parking garage. Needs the yeah, parking I was garage. thinking of a surface lot. And, uh, and well. It would be permitted under this code. Would, yeah, I could yeah. go ahead and do it. It's yeah. parking facilities, and the way it's written currently, it's, it's, you could have a parking facility, like a ground lot near the airport. Yeah. If you right. are not comfortable with that, it could just be parking structure. I mean, parking is as allowed as a accessory use by virtue of it. But we're saying that this is now a business that would be allowable. And it and it's a carryover. It's currently in our C business. 
um, which is probably um, NRM manufacturing, which is probably where it came from, 2010. That was a holdover from the TRR di district. It, I, we didn't. It wasn't changed as part of the of the renovations or renovation of the modifications <laughs> to the code. So if right. um, that's something that you want to revisit or have the town board take a lo another look at. I don't think that would be something that would be desirable or an end product. So is surface lot as specifically? Right. Okay, surface lot. Okay. Could, is this district <coughs> only the former project that we don't want to speak of as, as a boundary or is this something other than the former Medley Center property if as looking well? and I and I apologize I meant to provide the updated code so you could the, the map so you can see that I believe that it's the all the parcels that have been his, were histi historically um, identified as Medley is it the same map that's in the back of the current code no I wouldn't use that map because that was a master plan map that was prepared as to what the build out was going to be right i mean i mean the boundary there's General a boundary, boundary line yeah. on there yeah so then i i actually it like may not mirror it exactly yeah but it's, it gives but me the general yeah, idea okay. I, on the on the on your parking comment that you were just talking yeah. about i would actually kind of be in support of saying that you know a parking lot has to be accessory to something i mean because worst case scenario theoretically somebody could level that entire building and put in a 12 acre parking lot theor by code uh -huh. I'm hesitant to suggest, but what if you included the language that, that for monetary gain, it has to be a multi-story parking structure? We can, we can mod that's certainly a modification that it's I mean, a park I think, Yeah, accessory parking can be anything, anything right. but, but for monetary gain, it would need to be a, a multi-story parking structure. I only have a few more. I'll go through them quickly. No, you're the, good. Um, this is why we're here. And I know that these are just comments that we're sending off to the board that we have no reason to make any final decision. 235-176-B1 and 2. The 18-story building can go as close as 30 feet to Ridge Road. Is the way I'm reading this new code. It's a 30-foot setback on a public road and 200 feet is the building height that we're limiting, which is about 18 stories. Correct. So... Okay. A, a couple of things. Um, the the a new building of any type would be a trigger for site plan review. So this board would have an opportunity if it felt like the building was too big, too close to the road. However, what I would say is, in you know, if it was the 18-story building, that might you would have the ability to make suggestions for modifications, either lowering the height of the building if you felt like that was necessary or the board felt like that was necessary. So that would be a subject to site plan review. Um, Is there something in here though that says that we can restrict this? Because I'm interpreting that anything that we put in here is by right then. And no, it's not by, I mean, that's the limits that before you would need to go to zoning board for relief. So it doesn't mean that they, if somebody comes with an 18 story building right up against Ridge Road that you can go, uh, we be for a variety of reasons, whether it's safety, whether it's you know emergency access, wh whatever the case may be, you may be able to tell them you need them to push back. Visual impact, you know, through seeker, there may be a variety of. You still do have the site plan review safety valve. Okay, but but Alan's point is well taken that uh, you know when you establish these thre thresholds, 200 feet, 30 foot setback, there is some indication that that's permitted in the district and it's presumed that you can have that. So there is a balance there. So it's a fair point for the town board to consider. Sure, absolutely. Okay. It would be it would be difficult to give someone permission to a, to go to those heights and then try and take it away mm -hmm. when it's already down in black and white. Right. Um, 235-176-CA1. Um, that talks about commercial design in the code, I don't see anything on the res residential portion of the design, and I want to make sure that they can't be shifted back and forth without some sort of review. See what, see in there where it's talking about commercial on the first floor, transparency, I think. I don't have it in front of me. I can get to it. One of the things is, um, uh, we can architectural requirements that section. Yep, I'm looking at that night it's for um, I think for, if, are you looking for there to be something that 
I think for, for residential, uh, there are no specific requirements um, as far as transparency and or storefront establishment. So by virtue of the site plan, they would be open to, to cr create something and then this board would be able to review it and determine whether or not it looked good or felt right. Did you want to have, for residential components, it's um, did you want to add something or are you recommending to add a, a subsection of that, the number two, with respect to residential or the silence just indicates that if it's not commercial, then it doesn't need to meet that transparency requirement. Yeah, are you trying to say, Alan, that you would prefer that any residential project was mixed use and had commercial on the first floor so that it would essentially I'm not saying that we need to determine what the building looks like. I'm just thinking if I converted the old Sears into residential right now, not everybody's going to have windows. Well, that would be an issue for the architect and the person who's trying to build the building. So in other right, words... But I would think that as a town, we would want that as a requirement. It's also, it's also a building permit requirement. They can't right. have... You can't have dwelling units that don't have two, form, two points of egress. Right. So by virtue, if they wanted to convert it to residential space, modification to the building would be needed in order to accommodate that. Okay. So by virtue just of um, building permit requirements, some of the things that... This is more of a from a design perspective. Yep. This also says new for new construction commercial right. building. So Correct. it wouldn't be like a, it would have to be a new building. And then if somebody was building a new three story residential apartment building, I don't I think the intent here is that they wouldn't have to have 50 percent transparency on the first floor is all we're saying. Correct. So that people would have their, their it's really Privacy. that was yeah, that was directed more toward the commercial en yep. entity. So two thirty five. We can go on. I mean, and I've got it. Um, 235-176-D3, um, I would put in that they must. I mean, this is a safety issue. It's not a should issue. It's on constructing barriers between people sitting and people driving. Because if I put in the word should, that's an option. If I put in the word must, it's no longer. So we can re maybe reword that sentence so that because the should is also about it incorporating architectural walls or fences. Oh, okay. Rob, from from yep. like a legal standpoint, mm -hmm. it says design of such seating should complement architecture of adjacent adjacent buildings mm -hmm. and Must. incorporate oh. architect or architectural fences, walls, etc. By the by the nature of and. The should does not apply to the second portion of that. Uh, only the first, you could correct? construe it either way. I think the the cleaner way to do it would be to put a must in after between. the and. Yeah, so um, a must so in between. Should the be and consistent with adjacent architecture and, and must. must. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, we didn't talk about specifically um, rainwater or stormwater management on here, except in the landscaping section. Do we need it for any new construction, or are you going to just let that go to SWIP and let that so be done that way? Uh, the, the, the design standards didn't address anything specific to green infrastructure practices or minimum requirements um, for two reasons. One, largely it's um, that's a moving target sometimes in a code, from a code perspective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, and we have other examples in our current code that that's pretty obvious. So as, as strategies or design techniques change, then the code becomes very stagnant very quickly. Um, the, if you wanted to make a reference to, uh, you know, um, incorporating um, green practices, certainly could make that recommendation. I, the extent to which you could enforce it, I think that for some of this, it's, um, the, it's built environment there. If it's disturbance of more than an acre, a SWIP has to be um, prepared and they have to demonstrate how they're handling and managing storm uh, water um, runoff and in other development under an acre this board would have an opportunity to review how that's being handled from a drainage standpoint and looking at that as an impact and potentially identifying opportunities to enhance the the green infrastructure opportunities that might exist on a property, yeah, especially would, for redevelopment. Do we have anything currently in the code that allows for a carrot approach to this? Um, 
you know what? We may want to incorporate. Yeah, the so the in, the incentive, um, it, which it sounds like you're talking about the you yeah. get more for the um, quantifying or providing some trying to figure out how to quantify that or how to you know to what the benefits could be was proving to be challenging, and so that was one of the reasons it wasn't included as part of the um, the uh, proposed the draft amendment that was that town board has taken up uh, but the certainly something the staff and the town board can take a look at again the um, 235 176 e 7 that B it deals with the loading dock situation does that in the five feet that you guys are talking about there does that include the 30 foot setback that could be included inside within the 30 foot setback in other words it could so we're talking 35 then and no no within 25 plus the landscaped that okay. landscaped area all right correct. i don't have a problem with it i just wanted to clarify it in my brain um and the the 10 percent on the building thing i think we should really come we'll, up with we'll put up a cap we'll Especially put a cap since you could put it on it looks to me from what you're saying is i could put it on if i had three sides of the building exposed i could do all three sides at 10% of each side. And that would be qu quite but the But I'm sign. not even <laughs> sure that that would be the case. <laughs> right. we'll, we'll, um, we'll take a closer look at that and put a cap, um, and we'll, we'll likely um, look at the current C business and M manufacturing um, limits as a starting point. That they have a, There's a cap there as well. That was it. I, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, staff. <laughs> So Alan's questions made me think while I was sitting here. So we, uh, we I got that. Got I know, it's trouble. <laughs> so we had that presentation on walkability. Um, have you taken any of those um, guidelines into consideration here for how the parking lot should be designed? Uh, any of those guidelines that they provided? And there, can you? Yeah. So there's some indicate. There's some information in here with respect to pedestrian activity and trying to create safe spaces, um, but it the code language isn't so prescription prescriptive that it says exactly how to achieve that um, and I think similar to other proposals that come before the board if there's some place where you want me to where you want the uh, to su suggest or consider amendments I'm just thinking there was that checklist that said you know if you're going to be building a new parking lot you should look at those oh and at the workshop there was mention of adding a requirement that bike park facilities be provided on site. And so that's one of the potential uh, um, additions that we were going to be looking at um, making to the, um, and if the board still wants that to be one of the things that identifies as a, as a need is the um, preference for the requirement to have bike facilities either indoor or, or outdoor. Um, and then the preference, if it's possible, if it could be covered, if it's exterior if the board is still inclined to include that as a recommendation as well. Actually, I, personally, I think everything I've heard, I think was a good recommendation, but Mr. Palermo. Now, now, real quick back on the bike thing. When you say, if possible, to be covered, it, it, when it's written in here, it would say it needs to be covered, and then they would have to go to the zoning board. Well, that's a, that, that, how it gets written exactly is, if you want it to be, Absolutely, that it should be covered. Right. I, I would like it if it's an exterior, if it, if it, can, you know, interior I get is difficult. So I, I'm okay saying exterior. Um, if it's exterior, it needs to be covered uh, in, in likeness to the adjacent building. Okay. Um, That's a conversion. A, I think we could do a conversion on that. You trade in parking spots for bike spaces, right? I mean, that would be a carrot. Um, so I yeah. think uh, Brad brought this up though last time, didn't you? Stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> the how the tables I have turned. It. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so you want to have that be uh, an incentive? I'm just. Yeah. Oh I'm no. I'm trying to think of an easy way for it to happen, as opposed to a punishment way for it to happen, because sure. that turns into a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. Mr. Palermo. Mr. Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Want to leave something for Brad to say? I'll leave it for Brad. <laughs> um, I just have the I just have four quick things. The same four things that I pointed out at workshop, which was um, the bicycle parking that we just discussed. I am in favor of everything that everybody just said. Um, Brad, 
Do you want to just move? Yeah, I'll say that into the microphone. <laughs> um, uh, there's just four things. Uh, number one was the bicycle parking, just like the board just discussed. I, I'm in favor of everything that we just discussed there would be uh, covered. Bicycle parking, number two, we talked about removing EFAS from the example uh, materials. It's okay if they use it, but we just didn't want to call it out as an example. Um, number three was um, there was some really nice language in here about loading areas, saying um, existing loading areas facing public streets or sidewalks and loading areas abutting residential districts or you should still provide a landscape area at least five feet deep along the public street sidewalk or abutting residential uses areas. And I would like to see that in loading areas and parking areas so that parking is screened. Um, and then there's also a sentence here, new loading areas. And I was wondering if we can use the same language and change loading areas to parking areas. So it would say new parking areas should be located in low visibility, area, vis low visibility areas of the building exterior to minimize views such as the rear and side of buildings to minimize views. Um, would you be, okay, so we're just making, adding to that section or creating you, a Yeah, I just, it was just really nicely put. And I was just like, well, if we just switched loading and parking, then that says exactly what I think it should say. Sure, and would the board be, so just to make those changes, um, and just from a, a uh, sort of a process standpoint, the town board's gonna take in this report, take in public comment, and then potentially um, we can, based on this, we can revise or make ref recommendations for revisions um, and have that be part of the town's board's consideration before their March meeting. Um, do you have a strong preference as to whether or not it's combined, not combined, separate? No. Whatever you think would be best in your professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Those are dangerous words. <laughs> Transfer of power. That's creative freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the last one is on the old, um, on the old um, code, and when it talked about landscape areas and trees, a word that I really enjoyed in the old code was canopy tree, and in this code, it's changed to tree inconsistent with the town's landscaping guidelines. But there's a lot of land, there's a lot of trees that are currently on the town's list that I would not consider canopy trees. And I'd like to see if they're putting a parking lot in, I'd rather see a canopy tree rather than a crab apple or dogwood or something yeah. like that, okay. which are on the list. Sure, so uh, if I indicated a uh, canopy tree? From right, the list, yeah. And just put canopy before that, that would yeah. be an okay change. Here I thought I was making a good change, <laughs> referencing the... <laughs> I took out the most important word. There's the next document you got to modify. <laughs> <laughs> take take the crab apples off of it. Yeah. So, so Michelle, you jotted down most of those comments. All, do you have all of them? <laughs> I noticed you stopped writing. That's why I asked. I stopped when Alan was about halfway through. So if, he, if you need help, maybe he can furnish he can furnish you for what? the record his comments. And actually, I have them. Okay. And then I, I think what the board should do, if you're so inclined, um, maybe someone could make a motion. Um, this says a positive or a negative, is that? You don't have to do that. Um, you could entertain a motion indicating that certain comments were made this evening for the town board's consideration um, and that you'd like all of the comments that were shared as part of this discussion to go to the town board for their review. No, so I moved. Second. You did it? Uh, no, I didn't do it. You did it. You, you, you've made every motion tonight. So I, I, think, we, I think we should give it <laughs> no, to Mr. Huber tonight so since, you know, <laughs> yeah, he was so go. patient. <laughs> do you make that motion? <laughs> Just say so moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Fighting over motions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we got the minutes. Yeah. Yes, we have minutes as our last item. This was from Monday, um, October 30th, 2017. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Did I get the right one? Yep. Sorry, October. Yeah, October it's 30th. Said. October 30th. That was our last meeting. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. All those
those in favor, please say aye. 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 With that, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Did we get a second? I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So approved. Sure.